Good morning guys, it's a beautiful day here in Exeter. Um, we've got a very busy morning. I'll try to keep you as updated as possible. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be a great day. So we've just come out of project meeting, as in any engineering project, it's always good to have great communication within the team and be constantly updating each other on what is going on within the group. Um, so now we're just going about to head to the workshop uh, to look at some paint. Right, so as I was just talking about, we've got some wood and we're just about to open up the hatch with, and about to paint with this glorious white gloss here. Credits to Ollie Whitten in SNC for, for providing. Very, very kind. Here we go. Right, so as mentioned in our last video, um, we're using a 3x3 three three meter testing grid. Um, I'll try to put that in Sorry. one of these uh, corners um, right now. To you. Um, this is Ben, he's on our project as well, currently carrying a piece of wood. Um, he's actually in that previous video as well. And uh, so, yeah, now we'll get to do some fun painting. painting for today um, so what we'll be doing next is going to the electronics lab but for those of you wondering <laughs> those of you wondering why we're we using white paint um, it's because of the lidar so it uses an infrared beam and that reflects best off um, white glossy surfaces hence why we're using this white color not just for aesthetic purposes so I'll see you guys down in the electronics lab Hey guys, although I did go down to the electronics workshop, there wasn't really anything to show you. Oh, I just maybe forgot to film. Anyway, yeah, so there's a lot I can still show you otherwise outside of there, and it was mainly just written work anyway. But for now, I'm gonna mainly show you the, the maths behind the coordinate system that I was talking about in the previous video, and how the LiDAR, gyroscope, and both those components link up um, to provide the coordinate system and all of the maths associated with that system. Okay, so as I keep explaining, we're using a three by three meter testing grid um, shown in this picture right here. Um, and so for as the LIDAR only works, each LIDAR only works up to two meters, then you kind of have to split this area up into four separate grids. Uh, and from some initial testing last term, the ultimate range of the LIDAR is really accurately only up to 1.5 meters. Hence, there may be a slight dead zone um, in the center, but we're gonna to try to avoid that as much as we can. Following on from that, we'll then look at this top diagram. So this indicates where the LiDAR chips are gonna be positioned. This is actually a slightly older diagram, uh, but the LiDAR chips are now gonna be moved towards the center of the robot, um, just to take into account because they have a minimum uh, measuring distance of about eight centimeters, um, I think off the top of my head. Um, so the sensors are gonna be moved to the middle of the robot to try to combat this issue. Going back to this diagram, so with each robot having four LiDAR sensors and a gyroscope, at each particular point, the robot will be measuring its angle relative to the horizontal, and it will be measuring uh, the distances produced by those four LiDAR then if I just do a quick transition. Right, and so back on the page, we have loads and loads of equations. So with each angle and the range of angles, so for example, this is the X coordinate um, table which I've produced. 
and so for each sensor and for each angle um, there is a specific equation that, that governs that. Um, so here's for the x coordinate and here's for the y coordinate. Currently I'm just trying to implement this on a flowchart sort of structure um, just to make it easier to convert the code. As everyone knows computers are dumb. But anyway it's getting pretty late now so I'll catch you guys tomorrow morning. So now we're in the workshop, we're just going to do some laser cutting and 3D printing of some components. So it's going to be very interesting and I hope you guys find it very informative. So the plan today is to 3D print um, four little LiDAR brackets, SLA uh, 3D printing, two spaces. Uh, but we're also going to be laser cutting two bases, two tops and just a variety of other components as well. <laughs> That's all the 3D printing stuff set up. We're just going to be doing um, some laser cutting now. So I'll just put on a quick time lapse and uh, we'll see where it goes from there. That SEL, S, SDA? S, uh, FDM. Yeah. FDM, sorry about that. Um, FDM one is just broken, um, but we're just trialing this new technique. Um, so we'll be using a different type of 3D printing um, for the final ones uh, once everything has been confirmed. Right, so these are the finished components from today's laser cutting. Um, unfortunately, the first um, LiDAR bracket didn't work so well. Um, good reaction out there. But we've got a second one on right now, um, so that will be ready for the morning. Right guys, that's the end of today's video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it again. Uh, for any future comments or suggestions for videos, please put that down in the comments below. Um, I'll be reading them after every video. So the plan for future videos is to do two a week, one on Monday and one on Thursday, um, just to keep you guys updated on things. But for now, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.